as a species, we do our cognitive business, the way we remember it, the way we represent reality. Um, and uh, those pathways, of course, uh, are, are complex, and I won't dwell on those right now. Now, um, one of the products of playing with media and with external ex exograms, if you want, for several thousand years has been the product uh, that is especially epitomized in the last hundred years by what I call theoretic culture. And it, it is characterized by most of modern government and uh, bureaucracies, corporations, and of course the art and religion itself. Theoretic culture is a sort of abstract, um, totally different mindset of culture than what you see in classic mythic and mimetic um, expression. And it, uh, it, it's, it's come full circle so that it, it, the irony is you can see an old image taken from uh, the Cyclades uh, 2,500 years ago, or 4,500 years ago, and you see a modern sculpture taken <laughs> 20 years ago, and they look the same, and you say, well, what's the difference? The difference is that this one is a product of a mythic culture where they had deep beliefs and so on. This one's a theoretic culture. There's, you have to have a, a telephone book full of instructions to understand what this means, you know. But ultimately, the, vi the, the visual image is the same. That's one of the ironies of it. Um, this has created a new cognitive ecology, one in which you have uh, traditional external symbolic media, such as books and so on, but the global electronic information environment is also lurking out there. And it enters, it all enters through what I call the external memory field, which is what is immediately displayed in front of you at any given moment. And of course it enters the brain. And you're the ultimate destination of all of this effort, of all of this huge communal effort to construct this external symbolic world. One of the results of it is that it created a mind which is very complex. We contain within our minds the episodic knowledge of animals, the mimetic representations that have been around for two million years, linguistic representations that have been around for at least 150,000 years, and external representations of all kinds that bombard us day and night in our culture. So we're very complex beasts, and our cultures accordingly are very complex. And at the center of all this, of course, is human consciousness, which is uh, the, the, the vehicle which transmits the cultural matrix to the neural matrix. The question is, is our neural matrix plastic enough to be able to adapt to this rapidly changing cultural matrix, which includes technology? Uh, all of us float around in a sort of cyberspace, little Leibnizian monads, you know, isolated uh, beings, and sometimes we connect up and share memory with other people, and sometimes we don't. But in the electronic world, uh, we are in some ways stripped of our, uh, at least our mimetic tools for the most part. Uh, maybe that will change when uh, we get more interactive video. But one of the results of the modern period is massive cognitive engineering. En engineering is the designing, usually, of something physical. But in the case of the media, you're talking about designing something cognitive. The whole point of, of the arts is to affect the mind state of the person who's your audience. You want to create a, a mind state of some kind, no matter whether you're a playwright or a scriptwriter or a, producing a program or whatever. And um, I, I gave the example of Bourse Cathedral as, as, as an old-fashioned way of doing that. The modern way, of course, is through the media. And potentially, of course, this can be good, for, like everything else, used for good or bad. And uh, uh, raised serious questions about, um, you know, art itself and, and its origins and the various uh, types of art and the cognitive role of various types of artists, uh, something that interests me a lot because I think that artists in the, in the sort of the overall cognitive governance of society, and there is a kind of governance that has to do with ideas and beliefs, um, are very important. But so, for that matter, are all people involved in the media. Um, I will uh, skip this part and uh, just go on to the final uh, question, and that is the new media, uh, they're a product of high technology. They are largely theoretic in origins. That is, all those images and so on ultimately reduced to the ones and zeros of bo Boolean algebra translated into electronic form. But, uh, and their method is very, very theoretic. That is, everything is so carefully scripted that when you look at a movie or a television program or especially an ad, you're looking at highly concentrated 
experience that in, in effect is, is perhaps hyper real and uh, more powerful in some ways than, than close to the real world. Um, but the thing is, the content is up for grabs. The content right now of most pop culture anyway is mimetic. There, it gets occasionally mimetic in The Lord of the Rings, for example, uh, Harry Potter. Th these are very mythic things. Uh, uh, Star Trek, uh, uh, you know, and uh, Star Wars. Uh, Lucas must have raided every known myth in order to put that thing together, but, but, it, but he, he did, and it worked because it, people still think that way and they love that. Um, the point is, we don't have a stable mythic framework anymore in, a, in the multicultural world that we live in. And the theoretic lurks in the background. The theoretic is where the real power is right now. Um, but uh, it does not move people. Uh, the people can't live by the theoretic. They, uh, we're mythic and mimetic creatures. And uh, I'm concerned about the collision between these two cultures. Uh, because in principle, there, there are serious contradictions. So the, the, the dilemma that confronts the new me is the same the dilemma that confronted uh, artists 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago, and, and that is what to say. What is, what is it ultimately that we want to use these tools to do? Uh, the, the dilemma from the point of view of science is to understand what the impact of all of this is, because the rate of change has been so great that uh, when you look at the, at the sort of the trajectory of human evolution, you're looking at five million years, hardly anything happens, you know, about two million years there's some change, and then one million, well, half a million, and you can see the brain expanding at the same time. The brain stops expanding about 100, 150,000 years ago. But after that, it's all technology, it's all about culture. And the um, question is, as the culture has, uh, has exploded, in the last hundred years or so, in terms of what's stored externally and so on. How do we manage this? And uh, how do we govern ourselves? These are questions that I think uh, we're, we're all uh, concerned about, and I, I certainly think that we have to uh, look at it from a cognitive point of view to, to try to understand how our minds uh, can comprehend all of this and help us perhaps survive for another few generations at least. And that's it, thank you very much. so important to have context, but I don't believe we've ever had two million years of context before. <clears throat> I like to talk when I try and tell people about the NMC about how art is part of the DNA of, of our organization. But I think from now on, I'm going to change that language after having heard Merlin. I'm going to use language like imagination and humanness. I'm going to talk about the stuff of human culture. You've really opened our eyes today, Merlin. And I want to thank you on behalf of all of us. When we talk about digital storytelling now, we have a new context of a way to think of it. And so on behalf of all of us, please accept this token of our gratitude for your time this morning. It was a fascinating. And so, <clears throat> and so we come to the part of the conference where we begin to think about next year, and we begin to think about the people that made this one happen, and we begin to think about the thank yous, and I want to move into some of that. Um, and if we could uh, bring down the folks from the Cleveland team, so if I could have Wendy and Mace and Tom Nab and Mike Cubit and all of those folks down here. And in fact, all the, all the tech folks, if you'd stand up, because you folks have all done a phenomenal job. We'd like to take a moment and recognize all of you. Is Mace, is Mace here? Yes, I'm with you right now. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you, we've been working with these folks for two years uh, planning this conference. Wendy is the conference chair, and uh, Tom and, and Mike, and, and they represent actually a team of about 50 people at Case, and of course the leadership of Lev. Lev, you should be down here as well. You know, come on. Okay. And uh, and they have just every time that uh, you know a, a challenge has come up, they've just found a solution for it. Every time that uh, you know we an idea has come up, another idea has come up. That well, let's do it this way. It's a, and it's let's do it like times ten or something. It's just been amazing these guys to work with. And so, uh, thanks, you guys. Amazing job. It's amazing job. They host. And uh, and so we have we have something special for you. Okay. We have something special for you. Okay. We have something special for you. And Lev, we have something really special for you. But you get it later. Okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, I want to say something uh, really special for for Tom. For those of you who don't know, Tom worked behind the scenes to make that jam session happen. He was actually a producer for that. And, and, uh, and it, it, I think it's really created a new tradition here. And, and it, uh, it was so much fun. And then, uh, you know, uh, Mike's team just was such a pleasure to work with. So thanks to all of you. Just did a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And then uh, I'd like to ask Gift Constable to come down, if he, if he would. Last night, we were having so much fun talking about Second Life, we forgot to give Gift his gift. And so we have uh, a little gift for, for Gift. Uh, sadly, uh, Sarah's already headed back to New York, so we didn't, we'll have to send hers uh, via mail. But thank you, Gift. Another round of applause for his great job last night. And on to thinking about next year. Next year, um, we are going to have our regional conference in San Antonio, and it'll be hosted by Trinity University. Unfortunately, our host there, um, Ronnie Swanner, is not able to be here this morning. So pardon me for a moment while I go through a little bit of a transmission and put on my Texas accent. Like to see y'all in the fall at the regional fall conference at Trinity University. We've got an excellent historic Spanish style conference hotel for y'all located downtown on the Riverwalk. It's close to nightlife and a short walk from the Alamo. We guarantee wonderful weather for all y'all. It's not hot all year down in Texas. In fact, in November, it's pretty darn nice. Come hungry. Because San Antonio has the best Mexican food in the country. Plan to stay over the weekend because Fiesta, Texas, and SeaWorld are just outside the city. Shiner Bach Brewery is just a short drive to the east, and Luchenbach, Texas is just an hour away. Plan to attend November 8th and 10th. Let's roll that video, please.
Now, in case you want to practice up for that, the way that you talk Texas is you put an extra syllable in all the short words, so they go like whale, and then the longer words, you just stretch them. I'll let Daryl Bailey come up here and let you learn how to talk Hoosier. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Well, this has just been an absolutely magnificent conference. Uh, I love Cleveland. Uh, went to Oberlin College and uh, the Conservatory of Music. Spent uh, many, many uh, days in Cleveland uh, to the orchestra, Severance Hall. And it's particularly wonderful to come and be uh, with such wonderful friends. Uh, Tom Nabb, some of you might not know, uh, is a Grammy Award winner. And uh, so uh, the uh, Garage Band experience, you had true music leadership uh, for that experience. And it's just wonderful to be, uh, to be able to be here. Um, also, I wanted to uh, echo uh, uh, Larry's acknowledgments of Wendy's work and, uh, of course, Tom, Lev, the entire group here at Case Western. It's going to be... Uh, uh, really quite the conference to uh, try to compete with. But we are really looking forward to seeing you in Indianapolis. Uh, our campus, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, uh, is also the home of the second largest school of medicine in the United States, uh, the IU School of Medicine. And uh, in the building where we're going to be hosting the conference, we also have the Global Network Operations Center of Internet 2, Next Generation Internet. So we manage all the high performance uh, network activity actually throughout the world. Uh, the Southeast Asian and uh, Pacific Rim uh, high performance networks. Someone once asked me, how fast is Internet 2? Well, it takes 158 hours on a standard modem to download a DVD of Matrix. You can do that to the Internet 2 high performance network in seven and a half seconds from Stanford to, uh, to Indiana. And I'm sure it's legal to do that, uh, but uh, <coughs> nonetheless, uh, that's, uh, that's going to be one of the treats we have. Uh, the other thing that we have at the university, which is, is, is phenomenal, is the uh, mass data storage unit. And uh, Larry and uh, Nancy saw this uh, facility while uh, uh, they were visiting, doing a site visit in Indianapolis. And this, this holds 1.2 petabytes of uh, data storage. So that's a big number. And uh, I had a group in the other day, and we were doing a tour, and they said, well, how, how big really is that? Well, it's the equivalent of 120 libraries of Congress. So uh, it'll be fun to do a tour of, the, uh, of our big cyber facility and to see that. But we have a very special uh, greeting plan for you today. Uh, so uh, I think you'll recognize our celebrity. So I'd ask to, uh, for, the, for our little video to be rolled. So uh, here's our video to welcome NMC to, uh, uh, to Indianapolis in 2007. Hey, this is Rupert from Survivor. So did you survive all those speeches, the breakout sessions, and those workshops there in Cleveland? I'm sure that you new media types learned a lot. You know, Indianapolis is my hometown, and next summer's NMC Summer Conference will be held right here in Indy. Now, I can't promise you tribal council or this cool tiki torch, but I can guarantee you there's lots more in Indy than just race cars. So, mark your cave walls for June 6, 2007, coming to Indy to learn, to be inspired, and most important, to have a great time. But don't make me vote you off the island. Oh, yeah. And just so you know, tie-dye shirts are encouraged. I'll see you next June. Yeah! to thank uh, Neil Moore, part of our team, uh, for that uh, presentation. Uh, Rupert won the, uh, he's from Indianapolis, and won the People's Choice Award and a million dollars uh, from Survivor. So uh, we're really looking forward to seeing you in Indianapolis, and now I'll turn it back to, uh, to Wendy. Thanks. Okay, so here we go. Because everyone hasn't been thanked yet, um, first of all, thank all of you. This, you know, give yourselves a hand. What a, what a great group. Um, 
And particularly, special thanks to the conference presenters. Lots of opportunity for lots of great ideas. Uh, I don't know if they came in or not, but I want to give a special thanks to Robin and Laura, who's, who are part of Case's registration desk team. I don't know if they're here. That was great. Uh, all of uh, Case's ITACs volunt and volunteer team, like they said, like Larry was saying, there's about 50 people that were involved with this. This was fabulous. So thank all of you. I, they're probably gone already. Their weekend has begun. Um, Larry, Larry thanked Mike and the tech team, which I get to work with every day, so it's my pleasure. And I, so you did this already, but again, Lev, who never wants to be thanked, got to thank Lev, got to thank Lev. <laughs> so, and now I would also like to thank Rachel from NMC. Alan from NMC. Andrea from NMC. Adam from NMC. Boy, this list is getting bigger. And, and sincerest, sincerest thanks to Nancy Reeves. But you know, you know, and I don't have any presents, but we could not make this happen without Larry Johnson. Hey! <laughs> okay, so I think this is my responsibility to tell you that there, is, there will be an email with an online evaluation. We would love you to fill it out. We're dying to hear what you have to say. Have a safe trip home and see you in Indianapolis. Yeah. Oh, this, con this conference is now adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>